Welcome to the About Sex Podcast. I'm Joshua Skirtu, and with me, as always, is my lovely wife, Angela Skirtu. Who are you, Angela? I'm a licensed marriage therapist in Missouri and an ASEX certified sex therapist. Awesome. And who's our guest today? Today, our guest is Chris Scarberry. Chris Scarberry is a therapist in private pack practice in South St. Louis. He specializes in working with HIV and LGBTQIA, perhaps, <laughs> clients <laughs> with a variety of presenting mental health concerns. He has worked as a therapist for 17 years, a crisis counselor for 11 years until 2015, and has been in private practice since 2007. He served as a member of the Planning Council for Regional Funding for HIV Services and has presented on HIV and LGBTQIA. BTQIA counseling in a variety of formats. His main personal interests include, oh, this is fun. This is like a dating portion. His uh, interests include traveling with his partner, oh. Megan, <laughs> cooking, music, animals, and writing. Oh, we there might you. talk about some of that. We may talk about any <laughs> one of those things. My turn ons include <laughs> yeah. candy canes and rainbow bright, and unicorns. And unicorns. <laughs> Well, in my defense, I was asked to yeah talk like a playmate. There. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> Who told you to do that? <laughs> I always do. I always slip it in there somehow. That's what she said. Funny, funny. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so, you work with HIV patients. I do. What got you into that? Like, how'd you get into that? Um, I think HIV, uh, it, it's kind of funny to say, but I think HIV first got on my radar Um I don't know if you remember that show, Life Goes On, from when we oh, were yeah. kids. Oh, yeah. And there was... No. Okay. It goes, oh, buddy, oh, buddy. Yeah, I know that song. Goes on. No, it's yeah, a great that's show. That's the theme song of the show. <laughs> and it was sort of... It was a good show, but it was pretty dark for, for the period. But um, yeah. one of the teenage daughter's boyfriends, uh, heterosexual boyfriends, which is an interesting choice, was, was HIV positive I in see. high school. Oh. And I thought he was kind of... I, I was kind of, I don't know, a tortured teenager, and he was like a tortured teenager and, and dealing with the diagnosis and other things, and I was kind of, you know, vamped with that. And yeah. I always knew I wanted to be a therapist, and I think just in general, chronic illness appealed to me. Just and to be fair, weren't all teenagers tortured teenagers? Yeah. That's true. That's true. I, sh- I don't need to fall on the sword or be a martyr about that. Yeah. I Not think really we teasing. all sort of were that way. Mm-hmm. It's like That's life true. is pain. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. I was kind of full of myself and as all teenagers are. Oh, yeah. They're and, very full of themselves. And yes, indeed. And now they have YouTube. So now oh, now they're so full of pain. themselves. Now we can all hate on that. Yeah. I, oh, they're going to regret that, that in 10 years. Oh, I know. Like, what was I thinking? I can't get a job. Like, we're all YouTubers. I had 100 views this month. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and then it's a permanent record, right? Mm-hmm. No matter what. We're like, yeah, we're not gonna hire you because you were emo. <laughs> right, right. Well, sure. And I, I, well, I find with being self-employed, sometimes I find that you know, there's that line too. It's like, how much do you put out there on social media, just mm-hmm. on your personal social media? Because it's like, what if I ever want to get a job again? That's not this. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> nah, I'll just always be self-employed. It's the best. <laughs> it is the best. It is the yeah. Best. So I think I'm all right. Okay, yeah. right, well, so what happened beyond that? Then okay. I know right. you didn't finish the that, story. That's yeah. right. I did not finish the <laughs> no, story. No, that's what's we called totally a bunny trail. You off. Right, yep. right. We're going to bunny trail. It's going to happen. Sure, sure. So I think I liked uh, the sort of, uh, you know, challenging, um, you know, working with populations that were marginalized in different ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first the first uh, clinical experience I had, even though I was in college and I didn't really know what I was doing, was group therapy with sex offenders. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoyed that. Uh, that was, hard. It was tough. It yeah. was, And the folks that, that worked there really loved it and were really passionate about it. But, you know, it was they definitely put their whole soul into it. And it was kind of, you know, a drain for them, of course. Mm-hmm. But given, you know, recidivism and how, you know, how folks... How it is more of a managed managed symptom management thing as opposed mm-hmm. to, you know, mm-hmm. anything that ever gets cured or that sort of thing. Right. And then um, after that, I was like, I had this notion of HIV as like kind of another challenge, I think, as, you know, clinically, I was like, hey, this is something that's horrible and, you know, really needs um, advocacy and treatment and, mm-hmm. and things of that nature. And so um, I uh, got my master's at Pepperdine in Los Angeles. And I uh, worked at uh, my practicum during my program was at AIDS Project Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, throughout that clinical experience, then most of my clients uh, were were HIV positive gay men. Mm -hmm. And that sort of uh, the clinical experience Mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, was really foundational for me. I did crisis counseling for a lot of years. That's how I got licensed. But Mm -hmm. I always saw myself as being in private practice, working with uh, 
hopefully chronic illness, etc. down the road. Mm-hmm. I, I tried some other hats. You know, I'm noticing a theme that you like the hardest problems. <laughs> I, do, always. I do. I do always like <laughs> Like the every problems. single one. It's like, are any of them? So- nope, nope. None of them solvable. No, Very difficult. You don't want anything management. easy. <laughs> nothing System easy. Nothing fun. But I mean, it can be fun to work with help, you know, and help people in tough no. situations. <laughs> That's no, true. It's just, no. It's not fun <laughs> no, at like all. Anytime you you're working with severe right? illness or trauma, <laughs> it's going to not be fun. <laughs> no. Well, and it's funny, too, because, you know. Um, it can be fulfilling. It's fulfilling. But, yeah. But There's not... a difference between fulfilling and fun, but I think right. you can have fun with your clients. I, I at least sure. try to in my work. Right. Yeah. But you're, you're, gonna sure. have, you're not going to have much fun with HIV, though. So, yeah. I don't know. Agree or disagree? <laughs> I, 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 I disagree, but I also think that uh, since HIV is so much more of a manageable condition mm-hmm. at this particular point How in time. How much more manageable is it? Well, um, essentially, that, yeah. someone who's on medications now, uh, the, the current the current situation is there is there are one pill a day mm-hmm. regimens oh, where one pill? where one pill oh. has oh. the cocktail essentially in it, mm-hmm. and a lot of those a lot of those pills have almost none or no side effects, oh, and wow. uh, people can take you know one one pill and live and as long as they're compliant with their medication and they're careful about their health they can live pretty much a normal lifespan oh okay that's good so uh, I think a lot of folks lay folks and everybody don't really realize how treatable HIV is now sounds like a lot of the bite's been taken out of that as long as you have access to the medication because it's immunodeficiency right so if you Mm -hmm. keep up the immunities then Mm -hmm. you can pretty much live (laughs) correct (laughs) that's kind of that's AIDS in a nutshell or HIV (laughs) right right so there's that there's that piece and then also um, you know, yeah, I mean, when people augment, uh, a lot of their other, uh, you know, co-occurring issues they might have, you know, mm-hmm. depending on their income, a lot of those services are, uh, can be provided. Um, I'm a provider for, uh, the, the federal funding, the Ryan White funding for HIV. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, for counseling. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, there are counseling services, um, other related conditions like dental, um, you know, since um, HIV, I believe it's both the medicine and the HIV itself can cause dental issues. And, really? Wow. Uh, I didn't know that. Because it can cause thrush and uh, then causes problems with your teeth. Mm-hmm. And, and so dental coverage is, is provided, um, you know, food banks, things of that nature. Everything related to treatment um, can be provided if income specific basis so yeah. so, so um, a, little, a little bit easier now versus mm-hmm. the 80s and that's mm-hmm. a grant or t- it's like a grant for people who are struggling right. with that yeah. okay uh-huh. i gotcha ryan white was a uh i don't know if you guys are familiar with ryan white but mm-hmm. he was a hemophiliac in uh the 90s uh teenage boy and he uh he acquired hiv from a blood transfusion mm-hmm. oh. and um and his parents created this uh you know this fund out of that and it, the funding still exists and and is doled out on a year to year basis that's for good. the nas- nationwide so. oh wow that's mm-hmm. amazing that's mm-hmm. cool mm-hmm. so then i don't think you still finish your story <laughs> <laughs> That's what right. Are we I'm following about? the train. We're still, here. No, I know. Okay, We're still right. figuring out how you got into HIV okay, work, okay. right? So right. back, okay. money trailing back. Okay. It, it happens all the time. Treatment. I'm the one who's meant to keep us on track, but I do my best, you know. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, you know, I think part of <laughs> part of what it Don't sort of shoot me. She just shot me with finger guns. This is a podcast. Nobody can see the violence they that you're putting on. slightly passive. Yeah. Right. No, it was totally aggressive. <laughs> How dare you? You like it, kind sir. All right. So what happened so, next? Okay. All right. Let me see. Let me see if I can retrace my steps here. Somewhere in so, college. Uh, somewhere in college. Okay. So yeah, I'm I'm brooding in the you know the misery. It's you're brooding. Got it. Right. And then, well, I thought that was high school. That was high school. Yeah. How I trailed it. To college, he has the hardest thing. You worked well. with offenders. I did. I did. Okay. <laughs> then I went to AIDS Project Los Angeles, and I love that. Um, and I think a lot of what I found too, it, even then, even though um, you know, 1996 is kind of where uh, I believe 95 or 96 is where uh, some of the modern advancements in uh, HIV medication happened. So back when I was there, it was still uh, those had happened, but it was sort of still you know a little greener and a little slower in the process. Mm-hmm. But even then, I mean, I think I found that a lot of a lot of factors that my clients faced were, you know, they would come in 
but what they wanted to talk about was all their other concerns, their relationship, uh, any kind of first order, you know, concerns that they have, like if they're in poverty or, you know, they, right. they can't make ends meet, et cetera. Right. You know, about a lot of shelter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or even if those needs are met and they're doing okay financially, they still, you know, oftentimes had other concerns cause they, cause HIV felt like kind of a non-issue to them because they've been living with it for so long. Yeah. So I think it's kind of, it's interesting because it's, from a, I think from a clinical perspective and working with those folks, I think it's, it's sort of, it hangs around, but it's not always like an elephant in the room. It's not like, okay, every, every session we have to talk all about HIV every single time they come in, which I think would, would hurt, you know, kill even me. That I would think, kind of suck think, my soul a bit I think if anybody, I had to do that. I think anybody who would have to talk about the same thing over and over again, especially with something hard for them. They well, and chronic, a lot of right? Like, is it yeah. something you constantly have to face? It's it mm -hmm. may be nice that sometimes you can't just put it in the background and focus on day to day life. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. sure, helpful. sure. Because oh, another thing, I well, now I got two trains going here, but uh, that's the, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so I think with when I started private practice, I always knew I wanted to do private practice, even though I was doing crisis, uh, you know, crisis work, mm -hmm. and. Um, and so I, I started the private practice as soon as I was licensed, basically as soon as I could. Right. Same um, with her. She did mm -hmm. the same yeah, thing. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. Great. And so that's sort of the direction I went. And I tried, you know, when you sort of are trying to fit the needs of insurance and referral sources, especially when you're plugged into community mental health, a lot of them are like, well, we need people to work with children. We need people to work with legal and like sexual offenders, mm -hmm. you know, populations like that that are challenging and a lot of people don't always want to work with. Mm -hmm. So I felt like, well, I had experience with, and training and experience with sex offenders, et cetera. I tried that out for a little bit. That really wasn't the best fit in a private practice kind of setting for me. Mm -hmm. And I tried out uh, doing some children. My my degrees in uh, psych with an emphasis in marriage and family therapy. Mm -hmm. So I tried doing some some work with kids too, but that wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do either, for the most part. Mm -hmm. So I think um, I I knew uh, I uh, had a friend who worked at at uh, BHR the crisis line with me, mm -hmm. and she was a full time case manager at St. Louis Everett for AIDS. And sort of how these things serendipitously happen, you know, she was like, oh, why don't you come meet the case managers, you know, and you can and she helped uh, educate me about how to take the coverage and stuff like that. Yeah. And then that all just sort of, you know, evolved and snowballed and it was the best fit. And I, I really, you know, enjoy my clients a lot. So it just, you know, became a good, good fit for me. That's good. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, now we've got some trains to go down, don't we? <laughs> right, right. What was the second one again? Now I'm trying to. Important things. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, HIV and treatment. That's what I was going to say. Something uh. about. right. Yeah. So in the current situation, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So another thing that I think is telling is, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar or remember, but you know, back in the heyday of, of HIV, uh, Kaposi back when it was big. Right. <laughs> Kapo right. It was right. kind when of a big, big deal. And frightening oh, yeah. and terrifying. <laughs> When it first dropped. Right, exactly, years. exactly. There's a condition called Kaposi sarcoma, which is like those skin lesions that mm -hmm. people get. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's a form of cancer, obviously. And, um, you know, cur currently, you know, I mean, that was almost synonymous with with a having AIDS because right. you would, you know, as your immune system deteriorated, you would end up, you know, with those lesions typically because it's a it's an opportunistic cancer like you know mm -hmm. other conditions mm -hmm. and so i've only ever seen i've only ever seen one person with that mm -hmm. um at the at the present time and um and and my client was blowing everybody's minds because they haven't even seen it like the physicians haven't seen it you know nobody's seen it anymore it does yeah. it's not even like really a thing oh, you know mm. compared to you know how that was like the hallmark of aids at right. the time you know so i mean a lot of those things you know make make the condition so much more livable. I, I think what's hard about it now still mm -hmm. is that a lot of bad information still exists. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to interfacing with family and, you know, friends Taboo. and things of that nature, yeah. that's when it's harder. Yeah. Well, we should probably talk so, a little bit about that. Or, yeah. You were talking say? about myths mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. HIV. Yeah. Myths. Yes. So what are some myths of myths HIV? Myths and okay. facts. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is okay. the myth and what is the reality? Right. Okay. <laughs> so one of the, one of the main, I mean, I think one of the big ones that I hear that is so I is so in, it's small of course in some ways but it's so insidious is this whole 
you could get HIV from saliva thing that I think happens with, still happens with a lot of my clients, family members who aren't very well, either well educated or well informed. And right. you know, what do you know? My clients come out as HIV positive to their family. Mm -hmm. And then they have this separate silverware and dishes that are over here, or, oh. you know, or no one wants to eat off their plates. Or, See, you I was know, only thinking like about that. kissing. I didn't think about how far that um, might go. I was just yeah. worried about people spitting into my mouth. <laughs> Cause that right. happens to them on a daily basis. Does it really? So okay. now it's, I'll, oh, yeah. let's, I'll let you guys talk about that <laughs> later on. What stays in the, in the bedroom stays in the bedroom, Angela. All right. No, but I just didn't think of how far that would go because, I, I mean, mm. I thought, okay, maybe they would avoid kissing somebody, but, like, right. silverware. Yeah, like, not even else? wanting to share something that you've already washed. And yeah. The, and, and like, right. that right. seems, I, I, I agree. Gotcha. It's not, obviously, it's not I mean, I don't like to share a fork huh? with people if it hasn't been washed. In general, true, uh, just sure. with anybody, with sure. anybody, do the no matter what, germs, no matter what, <laughs> definitely, sure. right, right. But yeah, that's not mm -hmm. true. Totally though, our first year of marriage, we used to share a cup and play this game called remote cup. Do you remember? Yeah, but the you're game? my wife. That's different. <laughs> the remote, remote cup. The game, the game insisted is... that we would share a cup of water and we had one remote. And what oh, you had, to I do... would declare remote cup. <laughs> and once remote cup has been declared, the, you had to grab the, both to win the game. You have to be possessing both the remote and the cup and the cup at the same time. so what would okay. usually happen is i'd get the remote or the cup and he'd get the other right and then we'd wait and then uh -huh. somebody would get bored get distracted <laughs> by tv and put it down and then, and then the other bam, person you would win. Win. i would normally win game. yeah we had a Sounds small like apartment yeah. there you go. <laughs> i'm still the reigning champion he was, really? he was. Oh, yeah, i would totally. get bored the quickest <laughs> how often do you guys play that now oh, it's no, been a while i don't think yeah. it's it was the first year because it was a small apartment we use separate cups we use separate cups now oh how many <laughs> we can afford two uh, cups now. Yeah, that's we're good. Also I'm glad to hear you're doing well enough that that's not a problem. <laughs> I got you. What are some other myths? Okay. Back on a track. All right. Back on a train. <laughs> All right. Well, and I, and I mean, I think those things exist also with, with um, you know, with other, like, concern about, like, over concern about exposure to blood, mm -hmm. uh, like, within family and stuff yeah, like sure. that. I mean, I think... On the flip side, sort of the myths that are created now is um, uh, and come about now is uh, in some some sections of the population, you know, folks are believing more and more that that HIV is is no longer, you know, is basically cured. Oh, and no, so dangerous. on the flip side, oh. there are folks, you know, a lot of folks who are diagnosed with HIV mm -hmm. who um, who are like, OK, because if you're on your medication, the two big basic numbers, the main numbers that are uh, monitored with HIV are the viral load and the T cells. Mm -hmm. And the T cells is, uh, you know, our white blood cells. They're a representation of how good your immune system is. And uh, viral load is a representation of how much a virus you have in your body. Mm -hmm. So uh, the goal of the medication is to get the T cells. Uh, well, the, the, the lowest threshold is above 200, but they like to get it over 400 and then get the viral load to undetectable. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of times when people believe that uh, when people know that they're they're uh, undetectable, then sometimes they might start to believe that they're that they can't transmit HIV and they might oh. give that information to other people. Oh, whereas they're infected so and they, they personally think they could can't. be misinformed. Right. By that. Right. Uh, it's like even, I'm treated. I'm cured. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, their risk gotcha. of transmission is is significantly exponentially lower. Mm -hmm. But but at the same time, from what I understand, uh, there could still be virus in, you know, in in the lymph nodes or in different places. Yeah. And sometimes it can migrate through the system. So whatever they get in the blood may not always accurately reflect right. how much is in the system. Mm -hmm. So um, there's that piece. Uh, I think that's that's the biggest thing that I find with my with my clients because we talk a lot about disclosure since since disclosure of one's HIV status is is legally mandated in Missouri mm -hmm. uh, to sex partners to partners and, yeah, okay. and to medical professionals not just to and, anybody you meet at McDonald's right correct okay. only to sex partners and medical <laughs> professionals <laughs> by it's law not like the sex offender thing it's like, where like I just moved into your right. neighborhood I if it was side, I right. would have job security forever because they'd be traumatized constantly oh, having to disclose to everybody oh, yeah. but we still Let's have not but do that they, they, <laughs> they still oh, have to goodness. deal with that yeah um, you know with so once they you know with what, what was I saying about disclosure? I lost my train of thought. Well, uh, so they have to Missouri, disclose to their sexual to. partners. It's a yes. mandatory requirement. Right, right. Uh -huh. <laughs> so then they might, they might, um, you know, 
in order might... to have the best information, uh, you know, they need to sort of not be not be spreading that myth. I, and mm-hmm. so many of these things are so new, like uh, the the you know the the advances are so new that yeah, new information kind of needs to catch up with it. The other yeah. thing I forgot to mention is uh, is Truvada. Which is a medicate, which is HIV medication, um, and it it can now be used for what's called uh, PrEP, which is uh, pre and post exposure prophylaxis, is what mm. PrEP stands for. Oh, is for. that like the vaccine that they were talking about? It's yeah, that's essentially it's what it is. Is you uh, someone who is sex has a a sexual encounter uh, either prior or post Mm -hmm. uh, there's a a period, a window of time where they can take this medication Mm -hmm. and it will essentially uh, prevent them from becoming HIV positive. Oh, I heard of this. Oh, really? Yeah. I want to make sure I talked about that because a lot of people don't know about that either. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the other huge advances. And the, I haven't heard the latest numbers. How, useful, but, how helpful is it? Uh, the, I haven't heard the very latest numbers, but I know within the research that they've done, it's it's in the ninety some percent uh, uh, are uh, not in, of sexually act, high risk, sexually active uh, gay men mm-hmm. are not uh, passing HIV uh, from one person to the other if they're on prep and also undetectable. If is one part the receptive partner is on prep and the other one is undetectable. Is there any suggestion hmm. for like? All right, because so some like this sounds like it's kind of like a um, almost like that three day after pill for like a birth control, right? Is it similar to that, but it's not like something somebody could take if they just know they could be at risk and it's just something they want to do. No, it's also prep too. Like even if they're like, yeah, I might, so I just want to be safe. Right. Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. So if people are like, hey, they know that they uh, they engage in what are you know known to be higher risk sexual behaviors like. You know, more casual sexual encounters, yeah. group, group sex, or if they're like an if they're an IV drug user that has the wherewithal to take prep. Right. I mean, um, you know, those are situations where you know those folks can get on it, and then if they're negative and potentially not be infected with HIV. Oh wow, so, that's good to know. But but then with the, the myth thing, what that becomes then too, it's like, well, I'm on once again, I'm on prep, so I'm good, or right. and my partner's undetectable. But I do have I do have clients who um, are are in long-term relationships where they're HIV positive and their partner's negative, but it's on prep Mm -hmm. and it's worked fine and they haven't transmitted. They'll have unprotected sex and won't transmit. Right. They, they have not transmitted. Yeah. That's a risk. That's a thing when a relationship, you know, like when you transition from going to, from unprotected or protected to unprotected sex, you know, Mm -hmm. like, I think it's when you get kind of close, you want to be able to share sex that way, right. you know? And so that, that's kind of amazing that that's a possibility now for people. Yeah. What were you going to say? I didn't mean to cut it's you off, It's probably still not suggested, though. It's probably well, sure. I don't know. <laughs> Are they <laughs> still encouraged? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just thinking oh, yeah. of, like, back in the dating days, you know? It was like, sure. all right, you, oh. when we've reached the status where you cannot use a condom. Right, <laughs> right, <laughs> sure. And that's that's and condoms are, you know, I don't think well-liked. Even though, you yeah. know, f- condoms are foisted on gay men constantly everywhere they go because of <laughs> each <laughs> Here, so, hey, take a few of these. Know, it's like here's a handful of condoms. I, I, I yeah. They like from, get them for Christmas, right. and Valentine's Day. It's a condom tree. Yeah. <laughs> they, they do. And yeah. I don't think I don't know. Yeah, is that is that as someone working in the HIV field, I shouldn't say that no one likes condoms, but you know, it's the, it's not the most fun thing in the world. Sure. I mean, I think it's pretty it's well known. Like most people would rather <laughs> have sex without condoms than with right. condoms, right. but we do want to protect. Like, so if you have right. HIV, right, right, the, right. the first course is okay. It's please protect people use. with your sex. Yeah, correct. Yeah, correct. and wait, does it go beyond? Because I want to make sure our listeners know. So, like, okay. that's just like we're just talking about penis insertion. So I'm right. curious, like, for oral sex, is mm-hmm. it still also suggested to have like either a dental dam yes. or condom use. Yes, uh huh. And can it be the, the most orally. Like it, I thought it, it, it can't, can't go through saliva. Well, it's STD. But, yeah. So it's not mm-hmm. maybe saliva, but it's right. The fluid. The ejaculate. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're Semen. allowed to say that. So word. I'm can't. allowed. I know you guys said you keep it clean. <laughs> we try to keep it I'm, clean from I cuss think words. I'm doing a good job. Yeah, oh, you're fine. I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> so right. can HIV? Although our be... last guest totally said the F word, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we do our best. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> can <laughs> HIV be passed orally then? It, it can. It can. It can. Like okay. if someone had a, you know, yeah. If there, since there are, you know. uh so like with seminal fluid, et cetera, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, there's, it's not just a matter of saliva. Okay. Um, but the, the most, the most high risk, um, 
uh, sexual act is uh, receptive anal sex okay. uh, without a condom mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. the is the most high risk behavior. Mm-hmm. I, heard, I wonder if this is a myth or real because I remember hearing it. And so, like, I mean, I'm sure I've heard things around the bend that may or may not be correct. Mm-hmm. So, like, with condoms, I've I heard somewhere along the way that, like, there's a percentage Closer or further Back. away? Back. Okay. There's a percentage of people that even with condom usage that, like, I guess a little bit of the virus can still seep through. Or is that totally a myth? Because I just want to make sure. Um, that, I mean, other than a condom breaking, I've never heard anything okay. like that. See, myths I even heard in childhood that, like, oh, even con- – you know, well, I, I, even, the I even heard that same thing. Oh, heard that it, it wasn't a myth. It was actually on, an, like, an actual, like, scientific video. Like, yeah. okay. I was in a science class. Okay. And okay. It, was talking, it was talking about how – like there is a chance, very small, very uh-huh. small. The blood cells can't pass through the the huh. condom, but the virus itself is so small that I had heard it something could. about that the virus was very, but very I don't small, know if so that make it through okay. the. I don't know if that but was, I don't no, know. I've never Theoretical. heard that before, but I, it's possible. Yeah. I'm not a doctor. I mean, there might be. Well, something. and I don't you know, know, we were raised in like very conservative. You know, background. So my okay. guess is As sometimes there can be misinformation in situations uh-huh. like that too. So mm-hmm. I don't want to put anything out. That's don't why I was asking a, expert. Eh? 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 Use condoms. You're probably pretty <laughs> safe. Condoms. Condoms. When in doubt, condoms. Throw condoms. Ignore what prep. I said about not liking condoms. <laughs> yeah. Scratch, oh, we love that em. from the right. We're big fans of them. <laughs> oh, okay. Can't yeah. get enough. <laughs> <laughs> he just uses them for balloons. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> sure. Sure. Well, no, I use Make them when it's rainy. I put them on my feet. <laughs> now my feet don't get wet. I've never seen you put condoms on your feet, Josh. Oh, wow. Never. You just wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a new thing this week because it's oh, totally yeah. raining. Okay. Well, well, like I said, say, it is rainy today. So well, rainy. like I said, go to any LGBT agency and you can get or gay bar and you can get a fistful. Oh, they of have condoms just, to put on your. They feet. have fistfuls of, of, of condoms, uh, gay bars. Okay. Yes, love really. Places. Well, I'm never buying condoms anymore. There might have been an event. There might have been something. <laughs> Waves of condoms everywhere. Sometimes yeah. people, you know, put their put like agency information, you know, use that as a marketing yeah. tool. Oh, you that's know, that sort of oh, thing. That's so there's smart. branded condoms. So if oh, you that's call how I should that, brand I've my business. That before, yeah. <laughs> on the tip of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it on the wrapper or the condom it's itself? Probably on the wrapper. <laughs> on the wrapper. Oh, <laughs> that would be a little. It'd I want be like funny s- to put your face on it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we were kind of talking about sex already, so I'm right. curious, like, how does HIV affect sex? That was one of our yeah. questions, mm-hmm. and, like, what, what do people have it to talk to about like, their partners, that kind of thing? It sounds right, like it's right. a little easier to have a sex life with HIV. It is. It is. Yeah. Much easier. I think... <clears throat> This may be bold to say, but I think a lot of the oh, f- no. of the folk no, it's not that <laughs> controversial. Of the folks that I see, I think that the folks who have trouble meeting partners are probably the people who have would have trouble anyway, yeah. and have oh. trouble finding love and intimacy in relationships. Mm-hmm. And a lot of folks, uh, I, and and I mean, looks do have something to do with it too. But I mean, I've had lots of like, um, you know, people who don't have like the same per- personality challenges that might prevent them from dating and that sort of thing, mm-hmm. and they have enough ego strength to be able to withstand like some rejection and mm-hmm. you know that sort of thing. They're they're able. They've had either long term relationships that they've been able to find, mm-hmm. even when they're positive and their partner may be negative. <clears throat> um, you know, they found they've been able to you know bridge that gap. So, mm-hmm. but but at the same time, there are some folks that it, the idea of even disclosing is just devastating and it takes them years to i have folks that you know which is inspiring too you know it takes them a long time but working with them they can get to where they kind of believe in love again and they want to date again etc and they've sort of written themselves off as i'm going to be single for my whole life and i'm never going to meet anybody and you know they just become this sort of asexual withered you know being you know pretty much everybody in their 20s (laughs) acts that way no, this is an interesting true. theory. Okay. So uh, no, but I've had clients with other STDs too who have had that same struggle of like, you know, oh my god, like I have herpes. Am I am, sure, just, am sure. I ever lovable again? Or right. so like I think that's a like that's a phase that a lot of people will go through to some degree. But to what mm-hmm. to what length they probably spend in that right. phase has a lot to do with their personality and their ability to kind of develop resilience with that. That's yeah. true. That's that, that's sort of what what I think. Yeah. That's probably more accurate representation of what I was trying to say. <laughs> no, you said is, it just fine. Is that, I just um, said it in my own words, too. <laughs> right, you did, too. That's true. I think that, yeah, ult- ultimately, some whether whether people set up camp there and stay in that place or whether they move forward is sort yeah. of a, yeah, 
that that's kind of a function of who they are as a person too. Yeah. Um, and, and the issues that they have may have to work through in, in a, like a counseling setting, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So. so you get the opportunity to do that. That's pretty cool. Right. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yes, indeed. That's a so, lot of what I do. So you said most of the people you work with are gay men. Correct. Okay. And you're straight. That's right. So I'm not making assumptions. No, straight, right? <laughs> no, I told. told I, I just I know, already, told, I already came out. I already he came out as straight to us. I did. You totally I did. did. No, I know. I'm so, totally messing with you. Uh, <laughs> how does that work out? Have you gotten any discrimination against your straightness working mm-hmm. with that population? I ain't working with a straight man. I, yeah. I do. I have occasionally, and I. I mean, I would certainly say that's within their within anyone's right when they're you know shopping for a therapist, of sure. course. Right. But um, you know, I I do encounter that from. On, on rare occasions, mm-hmm. I mean, I think there are different <clears throat> profiles of people and different reactions that I find with that. Um, I, I tend to – it's not a hard and fast rule that I use, but I tend to most of the time not disclose my sexual orientation. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will if someone asks and it doesn't feel like a manipulation, sure. but I don't usually volunteer it. Right. I don't um, normally do it either. Like you, you walked in, I didn't say, hi, I'm Josh, I'm straight. Correct. So, yeah. Yeah. Correct. Male. Sure. I'm, sure. I'm a straight sure. cisgender male. Nice Some words you. we've learned right. this year. Right. I know. Us. You got the word, all the words. I don't even have to teach you any Oh, words. I know so many words. <laughs> So many. <laughs> One. Th- so this is actually a funny story. Josh oh, okay. hates the therapists use uh, a lot of extra words, and he says okay. that we make up words that uh-huh. already had definitions uh-huh. and reuse them. <laughs> yeah, you okay. do. <laughs> for that our is, own that's purposes. That's true. That's true. And acronyms. We love acronyms <laughs> that no one else knows what we're talking about. Yeah. Yes, yeah. indeed. But to yeah. be fair, every profession has its bubbles. Sure. You know, where they're like, "This is cool, and we love our models," and blah blah blah. I know. I just get to hear uh-huh. your. He bubble just gets more. to hear our bubble. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm married to a therapist. Sure. Sure, sure. This is the bubble that you're. The most oh yeah, she's with. definitely a bubble. Right. Okay, <laughs> right, right. So Wait, it, well, we were talking about something, right? I don't know. You started telling a story about Josh. I did. I did. It's no. all your fault this time. <laughs> okay, we were talking about my heterosexuality. Oh right? yeah, you being we heterosexual. Yeah. How's that okay. going for so you? That, that goes pretty well. It goes <laughs> pretty well. When you came out to heterosexual as your parents, how did they react? <laughs> oh, th- they were very relieved. <laughs> so, but no. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there. But but so um, at any That's rate, funny. that is a funny way to present that. <laughs> yes, indeed. So um, the whole what was I going to say? I don't know. You got me. <laughs> <Yeah. doing laughs> I keep losing my train of thought. Well, now I want to hear that story. Right, I'm sure you do. I didn't think we'd be laughing that much because we're okay, talking okay. about HIV. But that's, I don't, you that's got that's me. True. Okay, I okay. okay. What's it like being a heterosexual <laughs> male for being with gay men? Okay, that's what we're talking about. So I think. By and large, like I said, most most folks, I think when it becomes an issue, occasionally there's the only a gay man can understand me mm-hmm. sort of mentality that I run into. Right. A lot of times uh, folks really, unfortunately, have run into a lot of mistreatment from different providers, oh, yeah. uh, offhanded uh, judgmental comments or, mm-hmm. you know. Oh, or, I know about that. Look at this one right I'm here. I'm not judgmental. <laughs> I love everyone. Everyone. I was about to cuss. <laughs> no, see? No, see, right. even I'm mistaken. She's a wild card. Right. Yeah. That's true. You never know what, might, what, what you might yeah. get. So, but yeah, so I think. They've had those experiences, and what they most want to know is that I uh, that I'm able to understand that I have appropriate training and experience, and that I'm going to be you know open and affirming as we say, and correct, yeah. helpful, correct. Yeah. That I'm not going to treat them like you know some not just not like a pariah, but that I'm going to be open and affirming and treat them just like I would treat anybody else, but with the specialized understanding of what they deal with in life and you know that yeah. sort of thing. So yeah, they just want respect and they want to know you're not going to judge them and make right. them feel bad. They exactly. call them They're you co- people. Right. right. There's no you people. No <laughs> none whatsoever. What are you calling you people? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's the point. Like it's it's that like I call us my entire versus them you. mentality mm-hmm. that makes people feel kind of judged and criticized. Mm-hmm. As yeah, you to people just, always you're feel a person. That way. How Sure. <laughs> like, are you talking about you people like therapists right now? Oh, yeah. yeah, we're totally yeah. like that. Ugh, so open and affirming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, and oh, I yeah, think... to a fault. <laughs> sure. well, no, I... it's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> well, I do think that sometimes, you know, with some of my clients I, where I wonder, like, do what do they think? Do they not? Um, I, I feel like sometimes we meta communicate where, I mean, I get since I get used to spend so much time around gay men i mean i it's definitely flavored like 
uh, some of my interests and some of my, you know, things that I know, subject matter that I know about or different like things what? like that. More glitter in your life? There <laughs> is definitely more glitter in my life than there, or so to speak, metaphorical Right, glitter. more metaphorical glitter. And literal, glitter maybe. You some you never know. But, you could keep it in the office. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But, but I that, def- is, that would make it terrible to clean up your office. <laughs> that is Glitter true. never comes glitter out. Glitter is a mess oh and it God. never comes out. <laughs> but, you know, I think that because of those things, sometimes I wonder, yeah, Sometimes I might take it a step too far and I'll get a look where I get the feeling like, you know, when I'm communicating with the client and I'll get the look where I feel like they know that I'm straight and they're like, you can't pull that off <laughs> <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, OK, you know, did they ever call you out on it? I love it when clients call I, I've me gotten out on a little that side eye or, you know, eyebrow. <laughs> like mm. I might have called somebody girlfriend and they're like, oh, no, no, they're like, no. Oh, no, you didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> You get the little head <laughs> no, 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 that's not allowed. That's not you. <laughs> no, 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 it doesn't fit with you. So, yeah, there's definitely, there's that. and But but by and large, like I said, I feel like uh, the other thing I think is true is that um, if people are, the more comfortable someone is with their, a gay man, in my experience, a mm-hmm. client, uh, is with their own sexuality, the mm-hmm. less they're worried about what your sexuality is. Yeah. So mm-hmm. as long as they know comfortable that you're with gonna themselves, be, yeah. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As but, long as they know that you're going to accept them. Sure. And, but. but to be fair, you know, like you were talking about, like having discrimination in the past. I've definitely noticed yeah. that, like, can sometimes in the older generation with my, like, my gay clients, is that there's mm-hmm. a little bit more fear because they've actually experienced like right. some serious prejudice in their lifetime. Oh, you yeah. know, like sure. Um, first generation maybe versus second generation uh, gay so male population. Hundred generation. Well, I'm just I'm thinking of like like when I've had older in the older world. clients yeah. in the modern world. It's right. like you know like they're careful of me, but they're even careful of each other, and they're even careful of who do they who they come out with or right. how they mm-hmm. came out in their relationship. There's a whole. Well, it story used to be a death it. sentence. I mean, just it could have hundred years ago, fifty on, years ago. 70. Well, I mean, even just recently, depending on where you lived and the violence sure. associated sure. with sure. it. Sure, the Middle East right now. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. parts of the world. Parts of yeah, parts. of yeah. yeah. Oh, even so, here, they're the shooting at the gay club in Florida. Uh, in Chechnya. Well, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. People so, still yeah, have I a mean, long way to go. It, it, yeah, we have a long way to go, but you're right. Uh, even fo- But of the folks in the U.S., like you said, the folks that we would see in our office, yeah, of, of uh, LGBT elders, you know, a lot of them have. And, and occasionally, even though I don't always mm-hmm. see them all the time, occasionally I'll see phenomena with them that, that are sort of harken back to that like yeah. wearing fake wedding rings or oh, really? they, they'll lie about you know their marital yeah. status or mm-hmm. you know things of that nature they do uh, yeah i didn't know mm-hmm. that well there can be discrimination bias in the workplace for mm-hmm. example mm-hmm. and especially like so the older generation um there's still older, gener- older generation people living today not just in the gay population but mm-hmm. in america and mm-hmm. i just wanted to point out that we recently <laughs> We recently elected a president who's very openly discriminatory, discriminatory do, towards quite, quite sure. a few populations. Wait, we have a president? What? <laughs> <laughs> no one told me. <laughs> what? I thought there was just a duck in there, like, sure, sure. shitting all over right. everything. I'm right, just right, saying right. that the discrimination duck, bias still exists and duck, can duck prevent people from yeah. maybe raising in their companies, even that's though true. it's illegal. That's <laughs> true. That's true. I'm well, sure it's And the protections that everybody's been given are, you know, are all being rolled back. And that's one of the... Yeah. So since you sort of legitimized us talking about that a tiny bit, and I <laughs> a won't, little bit, I won't wax immortal about that too much. But <laughs> but I do think that um, that uh, one of the saddest things I've seen in my practice uh, thus far uh, with Trump's election and everything, or forty five. Is that the whole... Uh, Some people won't even say his name and they just call him 45. 45? I didn't uh, know that. Yeah. Is well, that... 45 is better than the orange guy or something, so... Sure, that's true. Or that's I've, true. Heard, I've heard the person the, currently occupying the, the, the president's for, office. Maybe they'll be the, per, uh, the person formerly known as the president when he's yeah. finally out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sure. No, to them, he's never known as the president. Oh, right. he's right. the president. I'm sorry, guys. All right, right, uh, right. right. Sorry, yeah. But continue. Sorry. Next it time, is. maybe you should vote. Right. <laughs> maybe. But but anyway. Continue. He's got sure. To Not say. you, but go on. Oh, okay. All right. I did vote, so I, I, Good, yeah. I, I can oh, own right. what I'm about to say. But the whole... Um, now, I, once again, I lost what I was saying. So, oh, yes. The saddest thing about my about that I've seen clinically mm-hmm. is that uh, some of my clients right after the election came in and they were like, you know, I was so excited. You know, marriage equality just passed yeah. and I really felt like I could get married now. Yeah. And, you know, that we really made a ton of progress as a society and I'm finally being accepted. And now this may not this may not happen for me. Yeah, that's scary. And all this could be rolled back. All these things that Obama did that are positive and progressive 
progressive. All these other things are all just going to disappear, and we don't know when it is that that'll ever, you know, be reinstated, right. et cetera. So, yeah, I mean, I think scary. there's a lot of understandable fear and trepidation that a oh, lot yeah. of us with either our, our own views or uh, a lot of LGBT folks and other marginalized populations are experiencing now yeah, because they even just like immigrants fear. and everything else. You oh know, yeah. Like what yeah. is going to happen? What is my status? And yeah, mm-hmm. nobody knows. Right. Who knows what can happen? And how am I viewed, you know, by the average American, mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. that is. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, that's been, that's been really tough to see. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's tough to see too, as a person of, you know, um, a lot of privilege relative to my clients too, um, as far as being, you know, a cisgender straight white man, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I haven't had a thing. I haven't <laughs> had a lot of hurdles. Oh, it's so great to be cisgender. <laughs> white man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is definitely, it is. We've definitely done a lot of harm yeah. and, uh, to say the very Some least. Some of us have. So, yes. uh, uh-huh. So do you know it's the rich ones. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I'm not rich. That's my last holdout. I'm, I'm not rich. So, um, but yeah, there's definitely um, it, to sit across from that. I mean, I feel like it definitely it it definitely sits with you. You yeah. know, to, you definitely you know think about the pain that they're experiencing, and mm-hmm. also the things that I'm grateful for that should be the case for everyone, not yeah. just for me. Yeah. And not people just for people like me. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people after the election came to their therapist with that. A lot of that fear. Oh, there was a lot of oh, yeah. sadness. She, she the said, whole like, month. The enti- everybody was depressed. Everybody about was yes. like, Trump. Trump. every I, single I, person. I, I tend months. to attract a liberal crowd. It's yeah. okay. As do I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, like, um, yeah, like everybody was crying and like really sad and like it was like a real like PTSD shock that I saw in my clients. <laughs> I was just like sure. I mean I'm feeling it, but wow, you guys are really like wow, okay, we're gonna figure this out, people. <laughs> right, right. We can make it. Just right. hold we're gonna on. Make it. Sure, sure. Seven more years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we have left, people. Because <laughs> he's gonna get reelected. Oh uh, boy. Because everybody I hear saying, Oh, he don't worry, he won't get reelected. Same thing happened. Two years ago, when they're like, "Don't worry, he won't be elected." Right? That, yeah, that's, you guys still have that mindset. He's gonna win. That's true. We all gotta, <laughs> we all gotta vote and yeah, be passionate and not be idiots. I know, I know. That's what I try not to, yeah, get too bogged down into. Sure. That, but I, but and that's one of. <laughs> the many joys of working with the client population that I work with mm-hmm. is they tend to be skewed like like all marginalized population they tend to see through a lot of the BS and mm-hmm. tend to be more liberal and progressive and yeah. um that it, I that's don't know rewarding. how you could be a that's gay rewarding. Republican though. No, I, mean, I don't. I know they exist. I know they, they do, do exist. exist. They're generally yes. rich. So. Yes, they are generally. <laughs> generally rich. rich. Oh, I'm rich. I'm mm. going to be a Republican. But yeah. that is usually puzzling, and it's very puzzling to a lot of LGBT folks too, especially mm. when there was like the whole Caitlyn Jenner. Uh, I'm going to be the ambassador for the Republican ambassador for the trans community. You know, all this sort of stuff. You know, it's the, the line yeah, that, that someone the, the <laughs> somersaults that someone would have to do to sort of make sense of that. Yeah. Yeah. You'd have to just be. Delusional yeah. to think that the Republican Party was stood for your values or, you know, didn't think you were expendable. So, yeah. Anyway, enough about politics. <laughs> Let's move from politics. <laughs> Let's move from politics. You have other questions, I right? Try to you know, I, I got to say, I am surprised because we were like, we're going to be talking about HIV. This is probably going to be a pretty dark topic, but it's actually been a pretty light show so far. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Actually, except My politics. clients tend to tell me that. What'd you say? Except, except for, for the politics. Except for, yeah, that no, we all, need a, we all need a drink. And now, you know. That's funny. God, yeah. what's so the next question? So, what's the next question babe? for me? Lob, uh, one, lob <laughs> another one at me. Safe sex. What? What? Did we already talk about safe we sex? We talked about we some. We talked about okay. it. Do some condoms. And I, th- I, th- I think I want to <laughs> condom move on. use. Okay, so you you also date another therapist. So mm-hmm. uh, that's a little outside of the HIV topic. But I was okay. hoping maybe we could talk about we can that talk, a little bit. We can talk he, about he that. is married to a therapist, so you know, he, he's he got is. some experience. He does. He does. <laughs> oh, are you married? Oh, I am. No, he yes. is. Josh. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, Chris has been dating. How long have you guys been dating? We're partners, and uh, we've been together seventeen years. Oh, oh wow. wow. Partners. Mm-hmm. Partners. Definitely. Well, partners. We're going to have to learn we about the We got the, the affidavit thing. and everything. You got an affidavit? <laughs> we do have an affidavit. Why are the police involved? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a legal partner. Oh, you're a legal yes. partner. That's what he okay. means by an affidavit, that's, not that's like I thought you had legal trouble. No, I didn't ever. <laughs> no, no. I didn't ever write no, taken away. Well, now this is going to be a whole conversation because so like we I went to graduate school in Oregon and I remember there were like lots of people who did the partnership thing versus marriage. So I'm kind of curious why a partnership? Well, I, I think it initially, 
the way it evolved is I had more of a traditional view of, of uh, like wanting to get married and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, Megan is a feminist and doesn't pretty much doesn't believe in the institution of marriage. And so we kind of went round and around and around about that. And um, ultimately, I... I'm, I've come I've come around to her way of thinking for the most part. I mean, I our so that means you're not, but you're dealing with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I after 17 years, you definitely are going to be comfortable. Right, yeah. correct. I'm correct. just messing with and you. Like she always tells me, everybody that we're with knows that uh, knows what our relationship is and sure. what it means. Right, and so you know that that's the that's the main thing. That's what's important. Mm-hmm. It's about the commitment. Correct. And your love Correct. For each other. And yeah, and we live like a married couple in every other conceivable yeah. way. So, uh, yeah. but you know, but it is uh, in so, some ways, I think it's been one aspect of her philosophy that I think is uh, has been useful to me is sort of the idea of choosing choosing someone because you're choosing them and because you because of love and not not just you know feeling like i'm in a command that i can't get out of you mm-hmm. know i made this i'm chained to this the ball and chain type right. you know analogy like and that, that sort one of right thing there. right correct yeah. oh i'm totally as ball and chain oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. but i'm an awesome ball and chain oh, so you're I'm gonna sure deal with you it. are i'm a big <laughs> fan you know. i always polish my ball and chain uh, <laughs> do you okay i don't know what that means i have no idea what that means but i'm okay that with sounds it. like more double entendre but that, that's fine <laughs> i'll give you a double entendre the finger guns and everything else are gonna come back all right <laughs> but yeah. <You> know. <laughs> so no, but you're but, not the first so, couple I've ever talked to about this. Like in uh-huh. Oregon, we had this couple that we were mm-hmm. friends with, mm-hmm. and I remember they had been together for something like ten, eleven years, and they're like, mm-hmm. "No, we're never getting married. We just mm-hmm. don't believe in the institution." Because there's a lot of traditional, um, like values behind it. There's and a views lot of women like, as almost, property, yeah, yeah, ownership yeah. things. Yeah. So like, I yeah. think there was like, a I similarity her, to that. I bought her he cash bought money from Hawaii, in the state of Hawaii, uh-huh. for eighty dollars. Yep, yep, that's yep. how much the license costs. The costs. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I always go. We go both ways yeah. on that, though. So I say I Actually, bought him too. Her okay. father <laughs> paid me to take her. Here, take my <laughs> take daughter. Take my daughter. <laughs> Shotgun that's wedding. the dowry, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you guys got married in Hawaii? Yes. Yeah, we oh, did. We that did. Is correct. I love Hawaii. Yeah, yeah oh, it's it was beautiful. beautiful. We did it for the pictures. <laughs> okay. What island did you get married on? In Oahu. Oahu. We used yeah. to live there, but like oh, I was we yeah. were moving to mm. my graduate school in Oregon and okay. I, I just wanted to still get those beautiful cliff pictures. So yeah. okay. we got married We got married we, in two different places. We both graduated <laughs> college and then got married and then went to Oregon. Mm. Oh, okay. And thinking back, I wouldn't have done twice done it twice. That was a dumb choice. Yeah, but we, we did, did it because wedding. my family lived here in Missouri. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and like so, it really was just a big waste of money. But there Uh are nice pictures from the time. (laughs) (laughs) And you can't beat it's paradise. So yeah, right, right. Oh yeah, it was great. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so back back to you. So. Okay, I so I'm with, so I'm with a therapist. Your dating, is, yes. your partner is a therapist as well. Correct. How does that work out? You're both therapists. Right, right. Well, I think the biggest ways that that works out is, you know, the challenges that we see, we can, we can support one another and go through similar, similar things. I think in some ways... I do some trauma work, but not the amount that she does because she's a sexual trauma therapist. Oh, and um, <clears throat> some of the, you know, the level of, of uh, uh, trauma that her, like complex traumas that her clients have been through, like she deals with like sex trafficking and different things like oh, that. Yeah. I mean, people That's have next been through week, stuff. By the way, she's is coming it? in. Oh, wait, <laughs> yeah, is she, she talking is. about she's, that? Yeah, she's probably. on your she's I might on your have agenda. to miss her. No, you will meet her it. shortly. That's gonna be a hard, t- hard topic. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. So, okay. I mean, the level of the level of uh, trauma that she deals with, I, mm-hmm. I don't think I could deal with. Yeah. I prefer oh, yeah. I prefer trauma light compared to you know that. Yeah, she has to be so. a really resilient woman she, she to is. deal with that. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah, does. even She's I struggle with me. complex. Tra- I mean, I still deal with trauma, but like, sure, sure. it's hard. It is oh, yeah. hard work, mm-hmm. and you can mm-hmm. really give you compassion oh, fatigue. Yeah. Which, for mm-hmm. people who don't know what compassion fatigue is, it's just basically where you die inside a little bit from working right. so much and having so much compassion it's a prote- from people. It's a way you protect It's actually a protective mechanism from over yeah, from over feeling. giving and over feeling. And yeah. so the only way to kind of prevent it or work through it is a lot of self care and sometimes taking break <laughs> breaks from the work. Really, em- empathy can really be- nurse. Nurses can get it, doctors, mm-hmm. us therapists. Right. Yeah. Empathy can be a really good thing, but 
But if you're constantly hammered with trauma from other people, it can probably overwhelm you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, especially Mm -hmm. if you experience it. Some people, like, it's Mm -hmm. not just, like, you hear it, but, like, it runs through. Like, that's why it's so difficult for me. Like, it goes in there over and over. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't stand life right now. Right. That's how I express it. It's almost like you live their experiences (laughs) when you think about it. But so, anyhow, back to you. So, yeah. So... Let's That's hear your sort of story. how it works for me too. <laughs> yeah. But but I think I think I sometimes laugh though because you know she and I just like treasure silence sometimes, mm-hmm. and I think we freak like family and people out because like we'll go in a room and we'll just sit down and we won't turn on anything and we'll just sit there silently. Oh, I would love we, that. You know, we do sometimes read. She never shuts up. <laughs> <laughs> they we are, also have a daughter. I have two <laughs> women in the true. house. You never have any silence. No, no, no silence. Do, I love it, but they are never silent. <laughs> right. I have to, if I want silent time, I have to be alone. Well, I had, so now you could see why people would be confused by the fact that you two have silence. Yeah, <laughs> Just go sit in a room and right. sit. Like, what are they doing? I'm not sure where to put my hands. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, for sure. So yeah, there's definitely. I I think we appreciate silence both mutually. I think it can be hard when you've given all you can sometimes within a given day, and then you come home and you have a significant other, and you have family, and you mm-hmm. have all these all these other folks who may have similar challenges at times, like we all do. Sure. And then you know some days are better than others. I mean, I feel like you can. I, you can only do your best. I mean, I feel that way as a therapist. How do you in deal general. with that? Like that feeling of dealing with all that trauma and stuff, and like, how do you unload it? Not into your partner, right? Right. <laughs> well, I I definitely as as we all try to. Right. Yeah. I just thought that was in a. It just made me think of a double entendre. Yeah, of second. course it did. I'll <laughs> unload on <Yeah>. you. <laughs> no. Once brown, again. brown. Yeah, yeah. I can let you be alone. This is what it's like to be it was married a more, to sex. Therapy. It was a more right. serious. Sure no, I knew it was I'm serious, sure, yeah. but I'm just terrible. I, I heard it too, but I wanted Continue. him to answer the question. <laughs> Sorry. Instead of you, you should sometimes ignore us because we're bad people. Yep. <laughs> just keep talking. No, I don't think that at all. No. But so I. Well, I you definitely, don't know us very well. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I yeah, just met. True. I've met you once, and now I've been here for an hour. So yep, that's true. Hey, it's, uh, at least it's been fun time. Right, right, so. Exactly. So what was but the anyway, question? We were talking the about how do you deal how with trauma? Do I, how do, how do, do I cope with with what I deal with yeah. chronically? How do you? Unload and that? I, uh, I mean, I think like we all say, and I believe you know, self care is very important. Um, I think. How do you do self care? I, uh, I well, right now, let's see. Right now, I've I've got some things I've been. I've been, uh, I just started, I, I love music yeah. and I just started, uh, trying to play the musical saw and that's, that's my latest little musical, the, weird little like musical a viol- like a violin. Correct. Oh, okay. It's a saw, but you wow, can play wow, a saw like yeah. a violin. That's cool. And so that's just sharp? a random weird thing. It is sharp. It is sharp. It is sharp In case you need side. to cut some wood. Correct. Yeah. You can use carpentry saws or you can use specialized musical saws. Yeah. Is yours so carpentry or it, I got a – Megan got me one for our anniversary. I asked her for it. Yeah. So um, – Yeah, that's not something people would randomly get. No, no. She <laughs> Surprise, wouldn't, she I wouldn't, got you a music saw. I tend to like weird things. I tend to be kind of a strange person. Yeah, so there's – you know, I, I have to inform people of uh-huh. what it is that I want for gifts. Yeah. I'm hard to buy for. <laughs> oh, I'm the same way. I just tell them not to buy me anything. <laughs> I just sent them away into the woods. That yeah. worked. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that what silence, the whole silence. It was yeah, so No, we do silent. like silence. He likes alone time. I like alone time that makes sure, sense <laughs> sure. but but yeah so i mean stuff like that um i love uh it's funny because i struggle with things like health and fitness myself but i mm-hmm. love like uh relaxation stuff like uh the like the sauna steam room like wet areas of the gym oh, or, yeah. sp- or spas and stuff like that i love that stuff so um things like that those are kind of the main things that i do throughout yeah. the week that's good um so it sounds like finding ways to create with music and then exercise that's mm-hmm. kind of what we do for mm-hmm. self-care as well. or sweat yeah. Sure. Yes. Or massages. Or we do massages. Yeah, oh, I like, love I like, a massage. Yeah, I like massage too. Oh, mm-hmm. it, oh no, I hate massage. Of course. <laughs> some people don't like sure. to be touched. Yeah, some people don't want to be sure. touched. Sure. Yeah, I sure. want to be touched all over. Or they think it's boring or who knows. <laughs> right. Boring? Oh, well, they yeah, don't have so aches like... and pains. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's if, you, true. <laughs> if you're over the age of 30, you probably definitely want Could benefit a good from a massage. shoulder rub. Yeah. 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 How often do you guys do that? We try to About do it once every... once or twice a month. Once or twice a month. I would love you know. to do it every day. Oh, my God. Day. I could do sure. it every week. <laughs> yeah, like, if I could do that every day, I would be king of the my world. My joke is That'd massage is therapy for the therapist because, like, really, like, I don't want to talk. I talk all day. I'm sick of talking. Oh. I had comes home and, and talks talk my head off <laughs> till midnight every night. <laughs> I, I, I had the worst, and and I don't want to make light of this man's plight or anything, mm-hmm. but I had the worst massage experience once mm-hmm. where I went, it was, uh, I went and got a massage 
And I made the mistake of telling the man what I do for a living. Mm. And, oh, yeah. And they and talk to you. He, and he spent the entire massage telling me about his schizophrenic son who just committed suicide. Oh. And he, and he would not stop talking about it. And I am just way too nice and empathic I mean, to be to, that? to be able says, to tell him like, "Hey, I don't want to be listening to this right yeah, now." Yeah, like or, for all you know. massage therapists, really, we don't want to talk. <laughs> talk we all. just want to be oh, no. quiet and feel that <laughs> massage. I Please totally listen get to this it. Feedback. Here's a tip: no, close it's your so eyes. True. Don't yes. ever talk to them. It's right? like, actually, just I'm just, just my sister was talking wow. about this and she said she feels bad, but she's like, look, I just, please don't talk to me. I just want to like, and I tell them I want to just fall asleep on the table. Like if you can make me fall asleep, you've done your job. And that seems wow. to help. That sounds like a good way to <laughs> couch that feedback. So I'm, I don't, I'm, I don't want to be harsh. So, you know, no. that sounds like a great yeah. way to put it no, across. Like, but no, that, that, that sounds difficult. You lost your son. Like, good Lord. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, and I then, can understand him trying to, un, I'm unloading that on everybody. You, it's hard to deal yeah. with. Yeah. Sure. Well, but especially a therapist, they assume. You know, yeah. we want to talk about stuff, but actually, when we're getting our self care, we don't want to deal with anybody's problems. Sure. Right. Not that they're not important sure. problems, mm-hmm. just not when we're trying to take care of ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I know. I, I heard a presenter of a at a conference once say that you know he felt like he, for him he felt like he always needed an outlet where he lied about what he did for a living, mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, I do feel like that's. It's gotten easier, I think, as you become a stronger therapist. It gets easier to redirect when people are mm-hmm. trying to turn your like social hour into, into their therapy. therapy. Yeah. And, oh yeah. Yeah. No. Doctors and lawyers have the same problem. Any, sure. any medical professional or professional that deals with yeah, lawyers mm-hmm. probably get uh, people saying, "I have this really serious problem," or doctors uh, are saying, "I right. have this mole. Can you <laughs> look at it?" If Every your job is to it. talk to people, right, and you're mm-hmm. talking to people outside of your job, right. they're going to talk to you and try to get free work. Free work out of you. Sure, yeah, sure. Happen. But That's I never true. thought of like lying about my profession. What would we be? Maybe a superhero. <laughs> no. Oh, all right. What kind of superhero would you be? No, no, super slug. That's my okay. that's my sister or my my niece has this really cute superhero, super slug, which goes, huh. I'll save you and then it's like a really slow movement because <laughs> it's a slug because it's Towards a slug dried out. so basically by the time the slug all the gets crimes people, have already finished dead. Yeah. <laughs> that but sounds like tried. a horrible superpower it's kind yeah. of a useless superpower yeah but well their superpower is just people their though. superpower is actually empathy they're just a slug <laughs> <laughs> yeah you got to be quick delivery system for them oh yeah probably. Anyway. That's so uh, having a partner who's a therapist. Yes. Okay. What's the right. best part? The the best part is uh, is honestly, I think having someone who totally understands what you do for a living. Yeah. I, I, as much as our work is a part of all of us, I, I think that that's that's phenomenal. I think that we enjoy being able to share that together sure. and being able to understand what the other's talking about, what the other's experiencing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, we we can help each other with like. Uh, you know, she she initially was going to be on here, and she turned me on to to this uh, to you guys podcast as an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Different, you know, different things like that. Yeah. Um, you know, where we can, you know, she's helped me grow a lot because she's a lot more uh, uh, driven as far as things like uh, speaking and presenting. Oh yeah, doing she's like things that. like that, and yeah. and I she's <laughs> kind of helped drag me kicking and screaming into doing some of that. Yeah, so, that's cool. So, it's good for business. <laughs> oh, for sure. So, what's the worst sure. part of being or the a most? Partner? Let's put it as the most challenging <laughs> the therapist reframe. you can put it how you want sure, sure. what's the worst part <laughs> well okay right right sure no matter how you might reframe it the whole i i mean i think you know as as i'm sure you might agree too uh-huh. i mean i think the the worst part is just you know when you know all of each other's stuff and then you're having your stuff drug out like in an argument mm-hmm. or no, you know your background or oh, yeah. you know or here you go again with that pattern in your life and your oh, behavior yeah. and, so, the, you know, so they're that, they're raping you <laughs> that's, a, that's the verb for therapy <laughs> the raping right don't the you the rape me no raping <laughs> no raping <laughs> but the raping, raping is kind of like <laughs> i see the raping your your, right. your spouse as raping though uh-huh. well it can feel a little invasive oh, it so there's some, there's some connections to it definitely so yeah when she became a therapist i definitely had to study a lot of psychology and stuff to be on the well, same we kind level. of like research some of the stuff together. So I went to grad oh, yeah. school, but everything okay. I learned because I'm a you know talk talk talker. I'd be like, Josh, I learned this. What oh, about? Yeah. What do you think about this? And he's and like, I well, l- let me. And I love to it. learn about everything, so <laughs> oh. I learn as much as I can. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Great. so yeah, definitely. Why don't you answer the question, Josh? What's the best <laughs> and worst thing about being yeah. with a therapist? Because you're not the only. She's not the only person uh, who's with true. somebody. So the, I'd true. say the <laughs> best thing about being married to a therapist <laughs> is that she's the kind of person who can just talk about anything. And just 
be the really very thing that he loves is she the also, thing he hates. <laughs> she also can be very what? Because <laughs> you said dare. earlier she won't stop talking, so it's oh, the thing no. you know you can love and hate. No, the same I love trait. and I'm hate totally this. I love you. hearing you talk. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? That's the best part is that yeah. you can talk to me about anything. Oh, yeah. The worst right. part is yeah, the th- raping definitely. <laughs> I think it's the that's the big part. I saw a meme that a therapist friend of mine shared that was uh, a, a therapist having the having their uh, name and credentials painted on their door of their office, mm-hmm. and it was and it was Psycho the Rapist <laughs> as yeah. three lines, and yeah. they're like it's Psychotherapist, Psycho Therapist. Psycho the Rapist. So it yeah. is. It can be an unfortunate. Yeah. You know, well, unfortunate I, I actually have. picked her uh, website URL, and it's actually ah. the Rapist in St. Louis. It's therapist. <laughs> it's therapist. But do we but I get did get a call here. from a, a drunk client in the middle of the night who who said <laughs> the rapist. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, four in the morning. At four in oh the morning, my God, we had to so have a conversation creepy. about boundaries, yeah. but it was funny. You like, mean that was laughed. an active, active? It was an active client, oh, and wow. it was just you know whatever. People drunk dial. He just drank drunk dial. <laughs> Yikes! Drunk <laughs> dial your therapist, okay. right? And I was like, so you know, you can call the crisis line, <laughs> right? But I mean, <laughs> I picked that URL because it's one of the most common search terms. People uh-huh. write therapist in St. Louis. Those three sure, words. Sure. So yeah. Sure. Yeah. It pops up. Makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But. CEO. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I was going to say I'm always worried about the electronic communication thing because some of my clients are definitely engaged in uh, some uh, – what's, what's the word I want? Uh, adventurous sexual behavior, yeah. things of that nature, <laughs> and, you know, yeah, when I get a text, I'll get accidental texts sometimes, and I'm like, please don't text me more. <laughs> than. It's one of those things like people hand you their phone, don't swipe right, don't swipe right. Up. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, never swipe. No, never don't swipe. swipe. No, don't no, give no. people your phone. Yeah. <laughs> I've, sto- I've, I've, I've just stopped giving people my phone. It's like, oh, you want to see pictures? Go on Facebook. Yeah. Right. Gonna, they're, they're all there. there. They're all there. Everything worthwhile yeah. on Facebook. Trust me, you don't want to look at my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. What might be on there? For you time. never know. <laughs> oh, you right. never know. Sometimes I surprise myself. <laughs> oh, okay. You're like, uh, I didn't know I took this picture. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, so uh, many dick pics. Nice. Now I was thinking, <laughs> I was like, really? my head was like, those <laughs> were the days. <laughs> oh yeah, she's always that way about. Those I was picks. totally making. <laughs> so, so I want to talk about dick pics for a second. If you okay, guys are open let's talk to about it, dick I, pics. I was uh, one of my friends on Facebook posted that you're never allowed to send me unsolicited dick pics, and like there was mm-hmm. this whole long strain of conversations about this. Of like, do you think dick pics are okay, or do you think uh, dick pics aren't okay? Uh-huh. What are your feelings about dick pics, Chris? <laughs> I I think that I think that my feelings are you a about fan? my my feelings about dick pics are have evolved. You weren't evolved. expecting that question, were you? <laughs> maybe, right. maybe not. Whatever. You know, uh, what, what about your feelings? I'm about always that? expecting that question. I, I think always. that I think that um, you know a lot of a lot of clients that I see um, that that are involved in more kind of. Uh, casual sex type encounters are on the different the different apps for gay men like Grinder and mm-hmm. and Scruff and Bareback and Adam for Adam and all those and a lot of those have pictures that are uh, somewhat or very sexualized in nature as people have, as the profiles and they share sure. you know pics like that uh, all right well, off of that because if you're only app. interested yeah. in casual sex you might want to look what the package has exactly <laughs> you want to see what the <laughs> yeah, delivery, delivery method is you yeah. didn't <laughs> use that term earlier or something along those lines perhaps but. <laughs> it might have been said earlier, but you want to see the delivery method. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I think it's all, I'm all about consent and, you know, both people being on the same page. If you go to a site like that, you know what you're getting. Mm-hmm. Everybody's open to it. Um, you know, if not, then things get murky and, mm-hmm. you know, and you can be exploiting someone or, you know, victimizing someone by bombarding them with things that they are not, are not yeah. once dicks. again with, dick, with pics of dicks. That's where yep. my line kind of goes to. I think that if somebody has not asked for it or they're uh-huh. not going to a site where they're already expecting it right. or sure. a place where you're already expecting it, because there are like nude beaches, for example, but like people going to something that like mm-hmm. that understand like, there will be nude like people. Like the supermarket. Right. You wouldn't yeah, you wouldn't, no, there. no, no. Like sure. nobody is expecting an unsolicited dick pic at sure. the supermarket. Well, and I think if you do something that drastic <laughs> and in that way, you are meta communicating something by you know all of a sudden introducing your nudity into a situation where nudity <laughs> isn't always found. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. But like if it's not solicited, then right, that's what I mean. Men, please don't send the dick pic. Right, if right. we ask for it, though, please be artistic in nature. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. Uh, you you work with gay clients. I wonder right. if uh, gay men are as 
uh, sensitive about getting unsolicited dick pics. Oh, I am curious about or that. Or are they just like, bring on as many mm-hmm. as you can. Throw you all know? the dicks this way. <laughs> <laughs> I have never heard a client complain about a dick pic. Okay. Or, or any sort of uh, sexual communication. But I've never, you know, heard... And that could just be a function of the presenting problems of my clients too. Sure. You know, yeah. sometimes I'm limited by that. How much can I generalize based on who I sure. see? Yeah, and, sure. Yeah, no, sure. You might you not know, talk about dick pics in every section. I don't. I, I do from time to time, but yeah, I don't. Yeah. It's not you know a general. Oh, I, I talk about one. them every it's day. It's like one of your assessment <laughs> items. So, are, how do you feel about dick pics? I'm like, are you sending me a dick pic or something? Why is this a part of the questionnaire? <laughs> that's that's true. That's true. Right, cool. So yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we're actually at an hour, so that, right. that, went, okay. that went way that too went fast. Quick. Yeah, all right, we talk it. all day. That was a great episode. Yeah. Uh, any plugs? Or do you have anything you want to plug? Um, I was going to say that if anyone listening is like a potential client or anyone that might uh, be seeking therapy at this time, mm-hmm. I'd be. I forget the amount that I wrote. On, I wrote that 50. down on there. Fifty. Okay. Yeah. I'd be happy to give you a fifty dollar discount on uh, the intake session if you wanted to come and and meet with me and see what I'm about. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so my, how can they, get how can they find you? My uh, my telephone number is three for the business is three one four seven five zero five two one six, and um, my my website is scarberrytherapy dot com. Sounds good. All, All right. right, cool. And, and of course, I've got a couple things coming up. So one, my Wait. book is coming out January twenty eighth, twenty ninth. It's less okay. than a month. It's, it's yeah. less than a month helping couples overcome infidelity, and as right. a part of a book launch party, I am mm-hmm. hosting a seminar called let's talk about sex on january 29th at mm-hmm. foam which foam. is in downtown st louis it's five dollars at the door mm-hmm. um speaking starts at nine but people can show up as early as eight and bring your like blankets or like i mean blankets. it's kind of it's going to be totally like uh there are couches at the place but then there's uh-huh. also like seating on the floor so it's going to be like grab your blanket or your pillows and just come and cuddle up and we're going to talk about sex Cool. Yeah, because okay. I want to go sit on the ground in a blanket. Well, <laughs> it's like a picnic. A picnic sure. at a coffee uh, shop. I got the vibe. A sure. It'll be fun. Or like vibe. the way I've been describing is it's almost like a um, a sexual health poet- a poetry slam. Sure. Okay. So, sure. you know, it'll be really fun. I'm going to talk for a while. I've got cool. my friend David Rafe coming to talk. Is there somebody with a bongo? Um, there's not. Well, I mean, if somebody wants to, people can sign up to actually speak or like present their poems or stories. Oh, so okay. like, yeah, it's kind of going to be a thing. And then at the end, we're going to do... Uh, question and answer and you can either do it through index cards or you can raise your hand but I've, what I've noticed is people are a little bit more open asking questions if there's a little bit of a non An- anonymity anonymity, anonymity. Yeah. <laughs> sure Sounds so good. come come join us <laughs> so where can they find out about that maybe on Facebook oh yeah on my Facebook page uh, visit St. Louis so it's www so hold on it's Facebook slash marriage family therapy or just look up St. Louis marriage therapy on Facebook yeah. St. Louis marriage therapy mm-hmm. sounds good I like good. foam foam's a cool place oh yeah I've yeah. never been oh, yeah. heard it's a good thing though good. <laughs> I hear they have coffee they yeah. do they sounds do. good alright and this has been the About Sex Podcast thank you for joining us thank you it's, it's been, been a, my pleasure yeah it's been a great conversation and you can find us at aboutsexpodcast.com And have a good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.